In today's video, we're going to install a forced air diesel heater. I'm really excited to get some heat on the pickled herring. I think it's gonna make passages a lot nicer because I can turn the heat on and dry the air out in the boat and get it nice and warm. And it'll be open up new possibilities of places I can cruise to in colder areas and still be, you know, have a little bit of comfort. There's lots of different options for heat on a boat, and so I'll talk a little bit about why I chose this one and the all different alternatives at the end of this video. Here's the unit I will be installing. To be honest, it looks a little bit intimidating. I'm not sure where I'm going to fit it, but this is a, it costs about $150. It's a Chinese um, knockoff of like the, uh, it's like a German company and one other company making really expensive versions of this. But from what I hear, these uh, perform just as good. I'm very excited and uh, sincerely grateful to the viewer who bought this off of my wish list. Right, we're I'm draining out the diesel of this, this tank so we can install the pickup and figure out where it's going to go. So we're relocating this hose so we'll be out of our way to put the heater right here. Yeah, box cutter's right. So I relocated the scupper and then we're widening up this uh, the old scupper hole and we'll use that to mount the heater. Right, Dave's going to line up the... Help me out here. Yeah, yep, you got it. Go. You got it. <laughs> Sweet. It feels, it feels like it's fitting flush, Sam. Yeah. Okay, let's put the uh, mounting bracket up there. This is our mounting plate. Now I'm connecting my hoses. This is the air intake, so um, we're for combustion. Uh, so I'll probably just kind of mount this up here. And then the exhaust, I'm going to uh, get a, a, a double walled version of this and also a longer one so it can run out the back. Um, but that's kind of, this is mounted up for testing purposes. It's got a little muffler. Um, and then those are just hose clamped onto here. And then we got the fuel line and my fuel tank is, goes right where my leg is here. So we can set this all up. We just drilled one more hole for the wiring to go and that'll attach to this little mini fuel pump. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put my little control gauge right here and I just need to drill a hole. I left plenty of spot space room on my, when I redid the electronics for gadgets. So, drill a spot. Not enough room for the socket to go through. That looks pretty good. Now all I need to do is wire up the wires. It has this inline fuse, but I'm just gonna hook it up to my fuses over here so I can have them all in one place where I can find them when I need them. So we'll cut that off. And then the remote cable plugs in right here. It's got a nice little wiring harness. And then the this negative uh, ground or whatever wire needs to be uh, needs to be lengthened a little bit. So I'll just go run and grab some more wire. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, it came on. Uh, so I have no idea. Power? Oh, the little, the little thing spinning. Oh, I hear a noise. That's a good sign. Okay. Is it, can you, you can see fuel coming through yet? Or it'd probably take a while, I think. That's what I'm looking. I, I don't feel the pump moving. Maybe, maybe I have to turn the temperature. P. Wait, it has like Hertz. I don't know. <laughs> yep, there's the pump. So apparently it can take a long time for it to prime. And you can hear it running. We're just waiting for some fuel. Head up a little bit. Oh, it's pumping faster. Yeah, it's drawing nine. Between nine and nine and a half. Oh, now it went down to eight, seven. Did it, maybe it lit. Pump stop. Or maybe it's turning off. Yeah. Yeah, so it was doing nine for a while. But we'll probably have to just turn it off and on again to get it to prime. So we're still having priming issues, so we're gonna try to manually, manually prime it. Ooh, look at that. There, hold on, I'm shoot on the line. Just in that oh, yeah. short amount of time. So I think actually lit. We're running all we have heat. That's nice. I know this little boat will be set. So now that it's drawing, it's switched over. It's drawing four, four and a half amps. 
Ah, it's so warm. So the noise isn't really too bad. It just sounds like a fan. It's a little noisier at the exhaust, but even that's not really all that all that loud. All right, so I got some little tie downs to organize this. This is the air intake. And then our fuel is teed off my main six gallon diesel tank. This goes to the engine. That's the fuel return, that's the vent. And here's a little fuel pump set up. And uh, then that goes, this goes to the control panel for the unit. That's the fuel pump. And we got the exhaust. I am very happy with this setup. I think it's gonna work out good. We'll see how it works like for longevity. Um, but so far so good. Oh, I can hear it down here. Yeah, it's coming. It looks like it's, it's coming it's not out. Loud at all, though. Um, we're pumping a lot of air in here, so I think there may be a second air from the engine, or maybe there's some leak or something. So I'm just gonna make a separate fuel pickup for the the diesel heater to have its own. Brother said the real challenge is to getting it up out of that hole we, we drilled. So, okay, it's nice long pliers. I think, oh, maybe, I think this one might be doable. I think it should be. Yeah. Just don't let go when you get it through. Oh, no. so slippery. I would hold it on the bottom with them pliers until you get that thing up in there. The air has finally stopped coming out of the tank. There's definitely an issue over there, but we tighten that up with these hose, hose clamps. Hopefully the engine will still work. And now it looks like the fuel is going to come out of the filter. Click, 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 click. It's working. I love it. I have to figure out how to set the temperature and stuff, but so the fuel pump. I don't know what this little green one. I guess we got to figure out that green one is. So warm. I love it. Yeah. I can see why the double wall would be. So let's see what temperatures we're looking at. Ooh, it's 200. Are you kidding? In there. Wow. Yeah, you, on the plastic. Wow, 230. Yeah, man. Now at this point, you can't even hold your hand in front of it. What? So now I've turned it all the way on the low setting, the lowest temperature, and the temp. The, it's dropped down to below an amp, which is good. Now let's see the air. It's still really warm coming out, but the fan's quieter. And you can hear the clicking. Click, click. The fuel pump has slowed down a lot too. So I feel like that was a pretty good accomplishment to get that thing installed and running in one day. Again, like I said, I still have to route the exhaust out through the back and get that uh, du double walled exhaust for uh, so it's less likely to have a leak and uh, kill me. I he heard about that suggestion on Matt Rutherford's podcast, and he did a really good uh, description of all the different heat options for his boat on a recent episode. Uh, the reason I chose to go with the forced air diesel heater was for one, uh, I have a ton of diesel on the boat. Well, I have, I have diesel already on the boat for the engine. I don't have a huge tank, but I might get a bigger one now that I have this. Um, so it was, you know, not costing me any extra tankage. I don't have anything that uses propane. So uh, that if I was going to go propane, I would have to add that. Um, propane heater is another option. Um, I've heard, I guess, that a propane heater can create more moisture. I don't know how... I understand it but combustion creates more moisture and then this diesel heater because it's happening outside of the cabin it can dry it out instead of creating moisture um, another uh, option for heat is uh, the drip style diesels like the reflex or the dickinson's like the stoves uh, but they take a little bit more room to mount you have to have like a lot of space around them they're kind of complicated to light and uh, you also have to do a chimney and they're more expensive so those are kind of the drawbacks of that but they produce a really ni nice heat also um, and they don't the, the advantage of that is they don't use electricity which uh, is a drawback of the forced air it uses quite a bit of electricity at startup i was looking at about nine amps and then even when it's running it's using some electricity it does drop down to um, half an amp to maybe like two or three uh, when it's running depending on how high it is that is definitely a drawback uh, I might have to add using more solar panels or run the motor every once in a while. The motor is also another source of heat some people use. You can get a heater that would uh, strip some of the waste heat off of the engine, similar to the way a car works or your water heater works on your boat. But I don't run the motor a whole lot, so I didn't, and I didn't really want to start running it more, so uh, that didn't really appeal to me. There's also the hydronic style heaters, uh, which is, seems kind of high tech. It uses like 
uh, it kind of circulates water to radiators and it, it just seemed too complicated and expensive for me to uh, and then there's of course wood heaters like and you need the chimney and a source of wood so then of course there's the heat pump which has the advantage of being an air conditioner too but again i'm not at you know marinas or shore power a lot to be able to take advantage of that or don't have a generator some people are just fine using sleeping bags like i've been using uh even a heated blanket can really make it a lot more comfortable too and those don't use a ton of power and of course if you have a shore power just space heaters that work good i used to use those in the past at marinas I'm, th I'm pretty, I think I picked uh, the right one for my circumstances, but depending on the type of sailing, your budget, the type of boat you're doing, you know, there's there's lots of different options. Uh, so I guess we'll figure, we'll see how this works long term. Um, but thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.